Apologies to those of you last week that tuned in specifically for Shira Taft's Scratch My Itch special, but some of your questions were a little heated for our mates here at Channel 31, so we toned it down a bit and this is what we came up with. Shira Taft here, just doing a bit of reading about wisdom and thought it probably is time to scratch your itch and impart some of my own upon you. Well, it's an interesting question because let's go to the root of the question, which is that men, all men, are capable of bromance. Now, bromance is something that is a simple thing harks back to the days, medieval times in fact, men felt strongly towards other men. Whether it's a pat on the bum, kiss on the cheek, as you see in many Middle Eastern countries, that is the feeling that men have for other men. However, what you're asking is, have you ruined a friendship? And yes, <laughs> you probably have. Because if you want to bum your friend, then he's probably not going to want to be friends with you. Unless he feels the same way. And if he doesn't, you've lost a friendship, but if he does, you're in for some good gay times. Well, what goes on another man's pants is none of my business. However, if you've got a bend in your penis, you've got something special there, my friend. And you're ahead of the game because of this. You're going to be amazing at genital origami. I'm talking about the wristwatch. I'm talking about the revolving restaurant. I'm talking about the hamburger. You're already one step ahead of every other man. So I wouldn't worry about the bend. If anything, you're a genetic super freak. Well, this segment might be called Scratch My Itch, but personally, that's disgusting. I don't want to hear about what's going on down there. I'm all for manscaping and cleaning it up, because everyone knows that if you trim the hairs around the outside of it, it's going to look a little bit bigger. However, no one's going to want to put their mouth on something that looks like an allergic reaction. So perhaps next time, think about what you're doing before you do it. As men, we can put them to the test. It's called the blind test, or as I like to call it, come on, taste it. What you need to do is get three different cups and fill them with a viscous, warm liquid. Could be anything, really. Could be a congee, could be some sort of Asian food that is thick and disgusting, but one of them has to be your little swimmers. Get her to taste them one by one, and you'll soon find out whether she really is allergic to your semen. Because what happens is, if she drinks your one and there's no allergic reaction, then she's clearly not, and she's just a liar. But if she is allergic, you'll have to call an ambulance. Yes, it's a good question. And let's be honest, all men, and most women, I should say, enjoy masturbation. It's natural, it's healthy, it's fun. It's the most fun you can have with Mrs. Palmer and her five daughters. However, if you wanna get your husband to do more with you sexually, perhaps you should try this. First, take a fucking and take fist and stick up his ass and then until it breaks off make sure you put it right in deep and jam it in there and once he's saying and do it to me slap him over the face with a fist and his until he's off no more and once he's done that he'll definitely be yours forever that said every man has a stash of tissues nearby because he never knows when a wank might come on it's just one of those natural things you would like to see your favourite celebrity jump on Scratch My Itch or have any questions you'd like to submit to our guests, jump on Twitter and be sure to hashtag Scratch My Itch. That yeah. was a bit raunchy and it was Full on. The kids raunchy. are going to be freaking out we, if they know Shura. Yeah. We keep telling Stacey, Scratch My Itch, there's creams available. <laughs> okay, next up it wouldn't be a scoop episode without our YouTube clip of the week. I don't hear it clicking, do you? Do you hear it clicking? No. And there's something wrong. We're doing something wrong. Here it is. Oh, we gotta wait. Here. 16, 15, 14, 13. Here, get closer. Did you hear a click? Did you hear a click? No. Huh? I don't know, Frank. Oh, now, did you hear a click now? No. Hey, Frank. 
All right, now I gotta practice. The cake's <laughs> one. I wait a minute, Frank. There's something wrong. It's going on. It has another. Wait a minute, here. Did it play? Did you hear it click? Huh? Huh? Did you hear it click? Huh? Brad, it's not a porn clip. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Worst impression of an old man. <laughs> Australia's biggest export, after live cattle, is pop star Kylie Minogue. The singing budgie has sold over 60 million albums spanning over four decades. She has sold almost as many albums as 90s pop group Bardo. Miss Minogue landed in the country a fortnight ago, performing her acclaimed Aphrodite tour Bray. Now, it's no secret around here that I'm a pretty big Kylie Minogue fan. Don't let the lesbian haircut fool you. I once met the pop star, got her to sign my arm and then this ended up happening So it's safe to say my review is going to be a tad biased. Suck it up, bitches. Now for the uneducated, Kylie concerts are camper than a row of tents, gayer than pink icing, tackier than a pleather couch, has more men than Paris Hilton's vagina, more neon lights than Mario's VL, and has more feathers than a feather farm. And I loved every minute of it. The show kicks off with Miss Minogue rising from the sea in a gigantic gold clam. As the concert goes on, we see images of the ocean and mermen and octopus tentacles. I also spotted some crabs, but unfortunately that happened the morning after having a shower. Whoa. Singing almost every song from her latest album, plus all the biggies from her other ten albums, new fans and old fans squealed and danced in delight. Now the stage cost $25 million to create. It had parts going this way and that way and going in and going out and going up and back down the other end. It was like construction porn. And like all good porn, the stage's best feature is saved for the finale. Gushing liquid into the air, landing on the hardcore fans that forked out 400 bucks to be in the splash zone. Now would you pay $400 to let your favourite pop star blow liquid into your face? At least Kylie gave us the option. Take note, Michael Jackson. Oh, did he? When? Thank God the water restrictions have been lifted. Otherwise, Camp Kylie would have had to use Plan B for the finale, which was to get Danny Minogue to throw buckets of water on the audience. God knows she's available. Yes, Danny, Australia's got talent, but most of it's gone to your older sister. Kylie Minogue delivered yet again a truly perfect pop concert. Her voice has never sounded better, her ass has never looked better, and after seeing the thing three fucking times in a row, I have never been poorer. I am giving this concert five gold hot pants out of five gold hot pants. We've been told the heart of Essendon belongs to a lady who's called the Can Lady. That's all we know. So we've come all the way down to Essendon to ask the locals who is this Can Lady and we'll see if we can spot her. Okay, we have found a can lady expert, self-proclaimed. Her name is Trish. Hello, Trish. Hello, Nathan. Now, what can you tell us about can lady? Well, all I can tell you is that I've actually, um, don't know her personally, but I've known her to be part of this area for probably nearly 
say over 15 years. Now your memories of the can lady, how, how far back do they go? Uh, remember seeing her all the time, uh, back at primary school, uh, going through high school, uh, used to see her, um, you know, obviously getting cans, being known as a can lady, she was known as a probably about 15 different names. A can lady is actually new to me, so... Um, what, what did you call her growing up? Probably best not to say, say on camera, mate. No, I should probably make an effort to go up to her and meet her and probably, you know, just be an extended hand to her. Like, I mean, yeah. you know... You've got two cans you could give her. Probably, I've got more than... Actually, I could probably collect some cans for her. Oh, my goodness, that'll win her over, because, like, she is a big fan of cans. <laughs> <laughs> Who says Scoop TV has no budget? We've got a fucking helicopter looking for her. She was actually known as Lavinja back at school. So Lavinja the Binja. So, um, yeah, good chick, great chick. OK, I promise we won't go to her house if you tell us where she lives. OK. As if we're not going to come to the house if you give us the address, Trish. <laughs> So I'm hiding very well, camouflaging into the brick at the front of Can Lady's house here in Essendon. And now we're just gonna wait to see if she comes home. You win this round, I'm not waiting any longer. But you're out there, and we will find you. If you want to get involved and show us that you are a Scoopy, upload your video to our Facebook page and you could be a part of our show next week. That's it from us tonight. Thanks for joining us and please follow us on Twitter or on our website to keep up to date with all the latest goss during the week. We'll be with you next week, every Friday night at 9pm, right here on Channel 31. So till then, I'm Stacey June and have a bloody fabulous weekend.